Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we are doing the very much requested what bag is for what video. So here today I present to you a plethora of different bags of soil and what the purpose of each one of these is. I did go to Walmart to get these because I want it to make sense to both the American side and the Canadian side. I was going to go to Superstore, like to a Loblaws, but then I realized Americans don't have Loblaws, but everyone has a Walmart. So that's where I got my bags as well. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that at least some of these brands will cross over or the names will be very, very sim similar to it, but I will give you the synonyms to uh, basically the equivalent of what I'm talking about. So let's start off with peat moss. Now you've seen me use peat moss in my videos before, whether it be for mulching or adding organic material to an otherwise depleted soil that has very little organic material, or you've seen me using it to revitalize my potting soil to be able to reuse it. So this I know is a Canadian brand. I don't know if they sell this in the United States. You'll have to let me know in the comments down below. But this one or the Sunshine brand are both some of my favorites. I find that they don't have as many twigs in them and it is more peat moss. Now inside of this bag, there's no perlite, there's no manure, there's no topsoil, there's no nothing. It is straight peat, meaning it is relatively acidic if you watch the peat moss video and it doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it. So you don't wanna use just straight peat moss. You're gonna to wanna to mix something in. So if you choose to make your own potting soil, for example, and you wanna make your own version of pro mix or sunshine mix, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to take one bale. This is a half bale. So you'll take half bale, one bale, and you're gonna to wanna to mix in a bag of compost or manure and a bag of topsoil along with, if you're not using a cloth bag and you're using a plastic or a ceramic pot, you're gonna to wanna to use a perlite or a pumice just to add in a little bit aeration. If you are using a cloth or a fabric pot, then you actually could probably get away with not using pumice or perlite or using very little, mostly because you're exposing both the soil and the roots to a lot more air and air flow. So check out my container video if you want more information on that. So ta-da, this is peat moss. I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with what this looks like. So I'm gonna save this for the revamp I'm doing on how to reuse your potting soil for a bit later. I want to keep it packaged up and nice until then. Let's move on to the next one. The next one on the list is something called triple blend. And you'll commonly see this as a topsoil blend or a garden blend. Anything that says blend in it generally will have the same profile. So what this is, it is peat moss, compost and manure, and hummus. So what this is referring to is the peat moss behind me added with that compost manure I said you would have to add and hummus. And when they say hummus, they usually mean the layer just before the A horizon, but below the leaf litter layer or the grassy leafy layer. It looks like almost similar to a peat moss, but not as fibrous. So that's exactly what's going into this. And you could actually use a triple blend in a fabric or a cloth pot. Um, system because again you have that aeration but this does not have perlite or pumice so if you're going to use this outside of a garden and you want to use it in a pot of any sort plastic or ceramic you're going to want to um, add that perlite or that pumice now you can also use this in a raised bed setup for example it's gonna run you quite a bit of money to do it bag wise especially if it's a larger sized one but this is a ready to go garden blend that you can just plop in an outdoor garden you put it in a container you're going to want to add a little bit to it so let's open it up and see what's inside so as you can see here it is very similar to just a peat moss blend mix but it um it's a little bit darker a little bit thinner and it does have some chunkier bits of wood i'm suspecting that's probably the peat moss manufacturer or supplier that they use for this expert gardener blend it may not be the case with all the higher quality you go with 
probably the lower amount of twigs, t twigs and sticks you will have incorporated into the soil. So, so the next one we have here is enriched lawn soil. So what this stuff is, is it's essentially peat moss and peat hummus. In some cases, there may be some topsoil in it or um, black earth. If it has black earth or topsoil in it, it's probably a lower quality. But if it's peat moss or um, a peat base, such as the Schultz brand, it will have that plus a tiny bit of fertilizer not too much just enough to help with either filling in spots on the lawn or for starting a new lawn in general uh, gentle enough that it won't burn any sort of seedling but enough to give it a bit of a kickstart. so this honestly is that green bag the green and white bag behind me with a bit of fertilizer added in and you could probably go with just the bag behind me throw a bit of fertilizer in and you'll have the exact same results. So the next one we have is black earth or also known as topsoil. Has lots of different names to it, but this is very, very heavy stuff. And I don't use it unless it's to fill holes in the lawn or divots on a lawn. So this stuff packs down very, very well. That's what makes it really great at filling in any divots or gaps within your lawn setting or if you're starting a lawn, you want to level something out, then this is the bag you need. Um, you can mix it in to a potting soil, so for a container, especially if it's a cloth or something that's not retaining water, it has too high porosity for what you need, then actually mixing in black earth will help increase your moisture retention. Now, if you mix too much in, you can run the risk of root rot, mostly because you are holding too much moisture. So you wanna be wary if you use this. However, if you're making your own potting soil, you can put one bag of black earth into a full bale or if it's a half bale such as the one behind me one bag approximately this size of black earth will definitely help it's going to help increase the cation exchange capacity the microbial activity in the soil and a lot of other things like that so it has its place in the gardening world i forgot to mention what's in this is actually just really heavily degraded organic material so it's going to be hummus or peat moss that's been degraded for a while so these two right here, the ProMix and the Garden Experts potting soil are both the exact same thing. It is potting soil, so it's peat moss with a bit of compost or manure, maybe some black earth and either perlite or pumice, commonly more so perlite because it is a little bit less expensive. I'm actually saving this for a video later on where I'm going to compare the quality of the Walmart brand to the all expensive and almighty pro mix so you guys will have to stay tuned for that but i'm not going to go into too many details with the potting soil because i have done quite a few videos on potting soil to date and uh we gotta leave leave some content for when we check out these two and compare them side by side and last but not least compost slash manure now you can just get straight compost or manure but if you want to up your game just a little bit and make your potting soil just a game above or your soil in general bring it up just a step, then you want to get the composted manure or compost with lime. So that's what I have here. That lime addition is going to help to raise that pH, which is very important if we are using a peat moss based potting soil, coconut coir based potting soil, or if we have a pH that's relatively acidic in our garden soil, adding something with a bit of lime in it is going to help with your soil formation, um, especially if you have a clay soil. And overall, it's, it's a good thing. The exception to this would be if you have a berry bush or roses, they tend, or hydrangeas, they tend to like it a little bit more on the acidic side. So you may not want to use this if it has lime in it for that case. But this can be used inside of the potting soil mix. It can be incorporated into the soil profile. It can be used for top dressing on house plants. You can be used for top dressing in the garden, on our potted container plants you name it it can go anywhere and it is just an organic fertilizer i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button let me know in the comp 
in the compost below, in the comments down below, exactly what you like to use in your garden and why, what brands you like, and kind of what mixtures you like to use. Or if you have a homemade recipe, as I know some of you use shredded leaves and stuff like that for soil amendments, please let the community know exactly what you do and kind of the reasoning behind it. This was a highly requested video, so if you think it's going to help someone else, be sure to hit that share button and send it off into whatever group or person you think may benefit. I will talk to you guys later. Bye!